Hey what's up? It's screencast time and I'm Milton Alvarez, editor and co-founder of Smoking Apples. Smoking Apples is an independent resource for all things Apple, published by a bunch of Apple crazy fanboys like, well, myself. Today I'm going to talk about Espresso, a brand new HTML editor, Espresso from Mac Rabbit is making quite a stir in the Apple community, and for good reason. My personal experience with web design began with Notepad on Windows, moved on to Dreamweaver, then switched to Panix Coda when I moved to the Mac, and have been happy ever since. So I ordered to myself to check out Espresso to see it for what it's worth. Now this won't be a comparison to Coda screencast, as it's still a little early to judge. I'm just going to show you a few of Espresso's features, the user interface, what it has, what it does not have, and I hope you can make some sense of it. Espresso stores its project information such as file locations, FTP info, and your current workspace into a single project file. Don't worry, the rest of your documents stay separate from the project file. However, there's no one place you can see all your projects. On the one hand, this means you can freely move your projects between Macs, while on the other, it means you have to go back to the file folder system. Let me launch this Espresso project file I've saved on my dock. Here's the Espresso main window. With nothing selected, they display this gorgeous illustration by Weirle, the graphic sorceress. Notice how it fades out when the window loses focus. In the sidebar, we have three key areas. At the bottom, is your publish area where you can store different FTP, SFTP or Amazon S3 locations. You can access those in the project settings. In the middle is the project section which shows you all your local files. You can drag and drop things from Finder to add them to your project or create new folders or files from this little drop down menu. Search is also nicely implemented with a clean UI and fast results. Clicking any of the files instantly loads it up in the main window. You can see the code is color coded according to what document you have open. Here we can see PHP syntax highlighted in various colors. In the sidebar you get a navigator and a snippet manager. This however is just a preview. To edit the document you need to open it up in the workspace area. You can either double click the file, drag the file into the workspace area or just start editing. One of the brilliant features of Espresso is this code collapsing which allows you to clear up messy code and focus on what's important. Just clicking the little triangles brings down blocks of code into yellow buttons. This collapsing however doesn't carry over if you close the document or Espresso itself. The navigator allows you to view your document structure. If it's an HTML document, you can get a lot more info on what's going on. Just click on any of the elements to focus that in the main window. I'm not sure how useful this is, but it's nice to have anyway. At the bottom is a snippet editor, which has some intelligence built in. It will display snippets according to what code you have open in your main window. You can download additional sugars to extend these snippets. You can also store user snippets for code you use frequently across your websites. Now moving on to the CSS editor. Coming from the stables of the famous CSS edit, I was totally disappointed to find that Espresso does not, I repeat, does not have a CSS editor. You can see a breakdown of your styles in the navigator, but editing it requires you to manually type it out. It does offer suggestions while you're writing, but sometimes a CSS editor is just called for. Preview is enabled for HTML files by default, but you can select any other website by just entering the URL in the address bar. The preview appears as a separate tab in your workspace, which might result in overcrowding in that area. As for the preview itself, there is no DOM inspector, nor any other special features besides just a ba basic render using what I assume is WebKit. I think they could do a lot better than this. Moving on to the FTP manager. Espresso has a really powerful file manager. You can use it in a normal browse mode to just manage files like you normally would in Finder. 
or you can use the update, merge or mirror functions to keep your local and remote files in close sync. Review changes to see what's going to happen and then commit to them. You always know what's going on. This potentially allows you to edit a local file and when you save it, have it directly upload to your remote server or edit a file on a remote server and have it synced across to your local files. The possibilities are pretty exciting. To round off the screencast, I think Espresso is a very good 1.0 effort. It features a different way of working with web development, one that's more focused on raw text editing features, writing web languages, and tight integration with what's on your server. But I think they can do much better than this. They need to implement CSS edit, or at least have it integrate with Espresso in some way or another. The live preview features also need to be enhanced. I assume we'll see a lot of these features trickle in now that it's out in the open. That's it for the episode of the Smoking Apple Screencast. Please send us any feedback, comments or jokes at pr at smokingapples.com. Thanks for watching. This screencast was sponsored by Jumpsoft, the makers of unique content for Keynote, Pages and a whole lot of other Mac applications. Check them out at jumpsoft.com.